I'm Miss Elton. I'm Mrs. Mullane. And we are going to do some exploring in the wetland to find some wetland plants today. We came out together because it's important to uh, have safety in numbers when you're exploring nature. And we are also going to be practicing socially distancing behaviors and keeping our masks on. Here is our first plant that we're going to talk about today. This is common reed or Phragmites australis. Um, it is a type of grass. It grows to about 12 to 15 feet tall. And this is the seed head on the top. It has these nice, silky, soft, um, bright purple seed heads in the fall. So that is common reed. The next thing we're gonna look at in our wetland is um, called black willow. And this is a common tree that occurs in wetlands. It's adapted to be able to grow in the wet environment of the soils. And it actually is very flexible and bendy. So you can see I can bend this tree branch all around. It doesn't hurt the tree. Another really cool adaptation that black willow has is that if the tree falls down or loses a branch, it can actually grow directly from that wood stock. So the tree can get destroyed, but then regrow back from the side of the branch. This next plant is called wool grass, and you can identify it because at the top of it, it has these um, kind of droopy, more fibrous um, seeds at the top. And it also is much shorter. It only grows to about five or six feet tall on average. This is our next plant. This is arrow arum, and it gets its name. One of the things about it is that it has this arrow shaped leaf. It's a really large leaf that can actually grow up to two feet or three feet long. Um, another cool adaptation that this plant has for the wetland is that its seeds will actually float in water. And so it makes seeds that can float and float through the wetland and deposit themselves in a new place on the wetland to spread its seeds. So that's arrow arum. This is our next wetland plant and this is called lizard tail. It's named after these seed pods that it has. They kind of look like a lizard's tail. These come after the plant has flowered. There's a nice white long flower and then it turns into these seed pods as we go into the fall. Now the leaf of lizard tail is a small heart shaped leaf and this is lizard tail. This is cattail. Cattail is really cool because it has that hot dog shaped seeds head on the front, on the top and it actually um, will explode into a whole bunch of downy white seeds when you get into the fall. So you can see some of these have already started to explode. Another way that you can identify cattail even without the seed head on top is that the leaves actually corkscrew on their way up. So it looks like they're turning as they grow. And that is cattail. This next plant is called sweet pepper bush. And when you look closely at it, the leaves are um, serrated, so it's kind of hard to see. So they have uh, sharp teeth there. And then the fruit on it actually kind of looks like little peppercorn, so that's where it gets its name. Um, now in the fall, these leaves will turn bright yellow, which is really cool. And the seeds will actually become dried out and look a little bit even more like peppercorn. So this is sweet pepper bush. This is southern bayberry and a few cool things about this plant. It's one of the plants that you'd find in the shrub zone around the edges of a wetland. It has leaves that have um, irregular teeth kind of here and there every once in a while it has a tooth and notice how these leaves are really bright green. That's because it is actually able to fix its own nitrogen. So it's kind of like it has its own supply of fertilizer. That's why they're able to change so bright green. These bushes also have, these shrubs also have a separate male and female plant. So if you see blue berries, blue waxy berries along the stem, that's gonna be the female plant. And if there are no berries, that's a male plant. This is groundsel tree. It's another one of the shrubs that you would find in the shrub zone around the edges of a wetland. And it has white flowers that turn downy in the fall. They kind of look fluffy, like dandelion fluff. And it has leaves that are only toothed at the tip. So it has teeth just at the tip of the leaf, whereas the southern bayberry had teeth kind of 
every once in a while all over the place. But as you can see, these only have teeth at the tip of the leaf. And this is groundsel tree. This is marsh elder. It's the last of the shrubs that you might find in the shrub zone around the wetland. And you can tell that it's marsh elder because it's got teeth all the way up and down both sides of the leaves. Let's see if I can show you that. So it's got teeth on both sides of the edges of the leaves. Also, it has opposite branching. So you guys see how the, the um, stems come off right opposite of each other. There's another good one where they're right across from each other, right across from each other. That's a good way that you can tell that this is marsh elder. These are the needles of a bald cypress tree. You can notice that they're not in bundles like pine trees, but they have a feather shaped needle. The bald cypress tree is a tree that grows in wetland conditions. And two adaptations that it shows is it has a buttress tree trunk that flares out at the bottom. And this helps with stability and to increase the surface area for oxygen absorption. Another adaptation that it has is that it makes what are called cypress knees. There's one right here and there's another one right there. And they're actually roots that go out from the tree and then stick straight up into the air. And that again helps with stability in the wet soil. So there is the bald cypress. This is a big cord grass. It grows to about 15 or 16 feet tall and it has that sharp pointy antenna shaped seed structure on the top, which is how you can tell the difference between this and common reed because common reed has the soft fluffy seed case and this one is shaped like an old fashioned TV antenna. So that is big cord grass. Here is some salt meadow hay. It grows to only two or three feet tall and usually it lies matted down and forms big meadows, which is where it gets its name, salt meadow hay. This is salt marsh cord grass. It grows to be about three to six feet tall. So it's the medium height one and it grows closest to the water. So it's the cord grass that grows, it grows closest to the water and then the next one up would be the salt meadow hay and the last one would be the big cord grass. So that is salt marsh cord grass. <laughs>